the Jesuit Hour. Get to know the Jesuits. Discover their spirituality, their history, their ministries. The Jesuit Hour. Anything Jesuit, everything Jesuit. The Jesuit Hour. Katipuneros, magandang magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Today is December 10, 2019. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. It's a Tuesday, of course. Kumusta po kayong lahat? Welcome to our show here at Radio Katipunan 87.9 FM. This is the Jesuit Hour and I'm your host, Father Nono Alfonso SJ. Okay, so exciting po ang araw natin ngayon. Of course, uh, nakikita nyo na po. Uh, sabi ko nga, we are in the presence of great Pero bago po yan, ano, uh, of course, she needs no introduction, but uh, papakilala natin mamaya. Pero bago yan, bago tayo ma-distract, let's uh, offer a prayer for today, for this morning. And today po pala, no, uh, anniversary, ng death anniversary ng isang paborito natin. Hindi pa siya santo, but uh, Thomas Merton, the monk. Oh, yes. So... It is his uh, death anniversary today, and he wrote a beautiful prayer on uh, abandonment. So yun po ang ating ano po ano ipagdadasal ngayon. And of course, today also is International Human Rights Day, December 10. Let's pray in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. My Lord God, I have no idea where I am going. I do not see the road ahead of me. I cannot know for certain where it will end, nor do I really know myself, and the fact that I think I am following your will does not mean that I am actually doing so. But I believe that the desire to please you does in fact please you, and I hope that I will never do anything apart from that desire. And I know that if I do this, you will lead me by the right road, although I may know nothing about it. Therefore will I trust you always, though I may seem to be lost and in the shadow of death. I will not fear, for you are ever with me, and you will never leave me to face my perils alone. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As yes, it was in the beginning, yes, now it shall be, world well without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <coughs> Amen. Okay, so, simulan na natin, Justin, ano, kasi, as I said, we are in the presence of greatness. Lumiliwanag ang ating kapaligiran. Di ba, Justin? Okay, so, kasama po natin ngayon, of course, as I said, she needs no introduction. We are so honored uh, because she asked, uh, she granted our invitation to guest uh, in uh, Radyo Katipunan. Of course, she is a well-known Filipina actress. Um, ano po, ano, ang dami niya na panalo ng awards. Mamaya po, ano, ang dami niyang pelikulang nagawa. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hindi pa ako pinapanganak. May mga pelikula na siya. <laughs> okay. And uh, she's also a columnist. She uh, ano po, ano, contributes articles every now and then. And also lecturer. Of course, uh, she graduated from uh, UP. Ayan. Kaano mo? Alma Mater. Mass Communications. She's now also the Executive Director of Movie Workers Welfare Foundation or MOWEL fun. A post she has occupied since 2002. Ayan, ano? Uh, napasubo siya dahil kay, sa kaibigan niyang si Pangulong Erap Estrada, who founded uh, Mowell Fan. Okay, so, of course, we are very proud also, as part of uh, her ano, introductions, po, that she has been a board member of Jesuit Communications since 19 Kopong Kopong. Payat po ako na. <laughs> so, she's been a part of Jescom. That's why we have uh, invited her here. So, good morning po, Miss Maria. Kukumpletoin ko. Maria Elisa Cristobal Anson Rodrigo. Ha-ha, ba-ha, 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 ba-ha
Good morning, Father. Good morning, Father. Good morning, Father. Yes, thank you. Good morning, you. Justin. Yes. At good morning po sa lahat ng mga nakikinig sa Radyo Katipunan. Um, At naka- nakapanood through Facebook oh, yes, Live. Yes, yes. Uh, Hindi nyo na itatanong, Father. Mm-hmm. Nag-umpisa din po ang aking broadcasting career in a manner of speaking sa Katipunan din po. Doon naman po sa UP. UP. Sa UP. Uh, yung istasyon po ng UP. DZUP. DZUP. Yes. Uh, ano yun? As a college student? Yes, uh, yes. I was in my senior year. Parang practicum namin. Mm-hmm. No? And, uh, well, I will repeat, that was uh, ages ago and so many pounds ago <laughs> and uh, so many inches uh, from my waistline uh, ago. Uh, okay. So, Pero hindi po kayo, because of that experience, uh, hindi ba kayo na-encourage, na-inspire na to go into broadcast media? Uh, yes. Actually, ang major ko talaga, Father, sa UP was ano eh, uh, speech and drama mm-hmm. and then uh, radio and television mm-hmm. where I had the um, great privilege of having as my professors uh, the likes of Nestor Torre, wow. Alejandro Casambre, wow. ang mga classmates ko dyan eh, lalo na sa argumentation and debate. Mm-hmm. Eh, marami ho, galing din po dito uh, sa Ateneo. Oh, mga atenista, um, mahiling makipagdebate. Opo, oh, sila Henry Voltaire <laughs> Garcia II, mm-hmm. Jose Mari Velez, um, si Leo Kisumbing, mm-hmm. naging mm-hmm. Supreme Court Justice. Yes, of course. Yeah. Um, yung po, basta, yun po yung team na, mm-hmm. and then Edmund Sikam of mm-hmm. Inquirer, Pat Lazaro, who became Vice President of UP at yeah. some point, and sa mga babae, mga naging broadcast practitioners mm-hmm. din po, at uh, government officials yung iba. Mm-hmm. So, um, Wow, many, you know. Uh, yeah, I, I was mentors. in the midst of greatness. Yes. Oh, <laughs> oh, so, <laughs> Pero saan mo nanggaling? Ang itatanong ko una, actually, is uh, Maria Elisa Cristobal Anson Rodrigo. Saan nanggaling yung boots? Naku, kalayo-layo nga ho, Father. <laughs> ang kwento sa akin ng tatay ko, si Oscar, Oscar uh, Moreno. Moreno. Yes. Oscar Anson in real mm. life. Uh, artista po siya noon sa yes. Sampagita. Ay, nung pinanganak na ho ako, I was a liberation baby, Father. Wow. Uh, January 30, 1945. Mm-hmm. Nung pinanganak ho ako, uh, amidst the you know the, the the chaos of liberation and mm. the last uh, uh, parang the last hurrah of the Japanese in the in the country uh, meron daw hong famous um, comic strip character na ang pangalan ay Boots oh. so dun po kinuha uh-huh. kaya in my former life I think I was a comedian <laughs> <laughs> And of course, uh, nabanggit niyo na po yung father niyo, Oscar Moreno, uh, also a great actor. No? Uh, but your mom also, di ba, ang nanay ni, ano, ni Madam Boots ay uh, ap- apo ba? Ni Epifa- pamangkin po. Pamangkin ni Epifanio de los, de los Santos. Santos. Edsa. As in Edsa. Oh, di ba? Uh-huh. So, ang lo- royalty talaga kayo. <laughs> ang lolo ko at yung Edsa ay magkapatid. Yo. Uh-huh. See? Royalty. Uh-huh. Okay. So, yun nga po. So, anong nangyari? So, in- instead of broadcast, of course, uh, you became a movie actress. Um, before I became a movie actress, Father, mm-hmm. I had a TV uh, career. No? Nag-hosting po ako. Uh, um, I hosted several talk shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, then, I hosted Dance Orama, mm-hmm. which was a uh, nightly mm-hmm. um, music dance show for young people. Mm-hmm. At uh, as Providence would have it, or as sabi nga nung iba, destiny, mm-hmm. serendipity, whatever. Doon ko ho nakilala yung mapapangasawa ko, si Petro Wang, yes. who was also a media practitioner mm-hmm. ahead of me. Mm-hmm. Uh, we met on the set and it was a nightly show. Mm-hmm. So by propinquity ho siguro and uh, sharing the same yeah. interests, uh, after one year we got married no <laughs> kaya nga ho actually father i i i have to explain this you hindi po ako nagmarcha sa UP sa graduation eh. nagmarcha ho ako sa <laughs> down the aisle kaya da, at yung thesis ko hindi ko ho natapos oh my so i don't have my diploma ah. father 
Uh, and yet, I was able to take special courses later on, uh -oh. like in Georgetown University uh -oh. and uh, in um, two networks, in uh, one in Rome and one mm -hmm. in uh, Amsterdam, in mm -hmm. Rotterdam, uh, for special courses na mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. But uh, when was the uh, movie uh, break? The, the movie career started uh -oh. in 1968. 68. Yes. Um, this, despite being invited to join films as early as during my teen years mm -hmm. pero ayaw ko ng tatay ko uh -huh. kasi sabi niya medyo colorful at masalimuot yeah, bagamat yeah. masaya uh -huh. ang uh, movie mm -hmm. industry uh -huh. mm -hmm. what was the first film for you? Uh, the first film was El Perro Gancho which was an action film mm -hmm. uh, produced, directed and starred in by Eddie Rodriguez mm -hmm. at um I was maswerte ako father. I was blessed because I didn't have to go through the usual route of uh, starting in bit roles, supporting mm -hmm. roles. Unang picture ko leading lady agad, mm -hmm. and um, after that, leading lady no hindi oh, na ako yeah, sa, yeah. Uh, ano. So uh, it helped, I guess, that my father was my father. But after a while. Um, I think unintentionally I turned the tables on him mm -hmm. kasi after a while siya na yung kilala as ang tatay ni Boots Alzaro. <laughs> <laughs> so you began in 1968? Opo, uh, I was 23. So, so ang tagal nyo na po kasi even even today you're doing films, yes, right? Yes, yes. Uh, uh -huh. Napanood ko yung ano, yung uh, isa insurance, yung ad nyo ni... Uh, Mr. Eddie, the late Eddie ah, Garcia. Ah, yes, yung oh, sa sweet, Forest sweet. Lake. Yes. Forest Lake, oh, oh, oh. yeah. Ah, yeah, so hindi nga insurance, uh -oh, ano, uh -oh. yeah. It's actually a memorial Yeah, park. memorial pala, yeah, uh -oh, but it's uh -oh. so... <laughs> yeah, uh -oh. and uh, ang sinasuggest ko nga dun sa mga memiari at nagpapatakbo ng memorial park, which has really gone very big mm -hmm. nationwide, ang sinasuggest ko, sana ang gawin yung parang catchphrase ay, people are just dying to get there. <laughs> <laughs> pero baka daw hindi ma mahuli uh, ma ma hindi magras ma mga tao <laughs> pero, yeah. so uh, ano yun ano? almost like uh uh, 50 years already. Actually, 50 years so father. Pero oh. meron nung respite ng, mm -hmm. may respite ho ng 11 years during our stay in mm -hmm. in the U.S., mm -hmm. in the Washington, D.C. area. Because I served in the Philippine Embassy in Washington. And um, after my posting, we decided to stay there so our children could continue their studies. When was this? Uh, 1982 to 1993. Wow. But uh, what got you into it? Yung, uh, um, actually, kasi father, um, all my life, then and now, hindi naman ako full-time or mm. purely sa movies and uh, TV lang uh, eh. I've always had civic involvement, church involvement. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I was always lecturing on the side, mm -hmm. teaching on the side. So I think it was because of that and also because at that time uh, I was in the um, Board of Commissioners of the Population Commission. Mm -hmm. Na siguro na isip nila oh, tiga, na meron din ng involvement sa gobyerno. And I was doing shows both for ABS and the National Media Production mm -hmm. Center, the government mm -hmm. station. Na inimbitahan ho ako to parang to um, uh, gather or organize the Filipino communities. In, in the states, no, where where the the communities were very large, uh -oh. um, uh, starting with Washington D.C. Then we also had our our stints in San Francisco, New York, oh. L.A. And you did that for eleven years. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Wow! I was in the community relations mm -hmm. office, the embassy, and the media relations yeah. office. But did you miss the movies? Um, were you offered by Hollywood yes, when you were uh, there? In Hollywood, <laughs> no. Sa Hollywood, no. I had my offer in Hollywood when I was still here. Okay. <clears throat> and recently, Sana, a chance to appear in a Hollywood movie just a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Wow. An invitation came, pero the, um, the shooting would involve 
many days uh, and out of town. Mm-hmm. Um, nahiya ho ako kay attorney. Na kay attorney. Oh, oh, kasi yeah. masyadong matagal. Ay, sama mo. <laughs> eh, ang nagtatrabaho pa rin ho eh. <laughs> Hindi po niya maiwanan yung kanyang law. So you had to turn down ah, a Hollywood oh, offer. Actually, it was, um, it was an invitation to read the script mm-hmm. that they would send to Hollywood. Um, the for the role that they Mm-mm. they were recommending me for. Uh, ano po yan? ABS-CBN line produced. Mm-hmm. And so ABS-CBN recommended me for this role. Mm-hmm. He sent me the script. Mm-hmm. And um, I was ready to read. Mm-hmm. But when they told me na... Yung schedule. Ten episodes po yun. Wow. Uh, buti ng yeah. uh, 12 to 15 days per episode in Cebu. Wow. So medyo I got cold feet. Mm-hmm. Uh, baka, baka mapili ako and... And it was likely because I think I was the only one mm. they asked to read for it. Um, so, um, nag-beg off. Na so, kayo yung, ano, di ba, sa La La Land? Ano ba yung <coughs> movie? Di ba yes, yung, yung... Di ba yung movie, uh, uh, there was a choice between career and love, di ba? <laughs> Ang pinili ni Miss Boots ay uh, love. This was not the first time, Father. <laughs> okay. Actually, when I was pregnant with Chiki, okay, my, yes, my yes. daughter, uh, whose sons are all products of uh, Atenea, Atenea, of course, um, I received an offer to star opposite Topol, yung mm. pong lumabas na Tevia sa mm. Fiddler on the Roof. Yes. Broadway star siya. Ah, yes. And then he was going to appear in a movie, in mm-hmm. Fiddler on the Roof. And they needed a leading lady na wow. pwede mag-ingles. <laughs> wow. Na Asian na yeah. marunong mag-ingles at pwedeng mag-deliver ng lines in English. So kinonta ko ako dito nung producer. Kalimutan ko na famous producer, but I forgot mm-hmm. the name. Uh, this was in 1969 no. or 1970. Um, kinonta ko ako, pero... Ingan na isip ko din na, uh, and I was three months on the way, mm. cheeky or four months in the way. So again, it became a choice between oh. uh, wow. family and, and, and career. Uh, yeah. Pero sulit lang naman. Uh, but okay lang naman. Theater, uh, kasi you've been doing movies, you have done a lot of movies. Uh, theater? Uh, I started with theater, uh, father, uh, in Assumption, mm-hmm. uh, where I went for elementary and high school. And UP, uh, I was the first woman president of the UP Dramatic Club. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, I was a mainstay in the place of UP Dramatic mm. Club under Wilfrido Maria Guerrero, okay. national artist. So that's where, sabi nga, I honed my spurs, mm. siguro, on theater. And every so often, I would do theater stints here mm. um, sa iba't ibang mga company. Oh, binabati ka po ni Noel. Noel Ferrer. Oh, Noel! Hello! I love Tita Boots. Okay. Siya ang ina ng laging saklolo namin sa <laughs> MMFF, Metro Manila Film Fest. It would be good for just come to publish her book. Oh, naman, Noel. Oh, oh, oh ito nga, oh, Noel. Oh. Kinakausap ko na rin sila, Father. Oh, how can I say no? Diba? It's an just, honor. Maka just come can do the uh, printing of, course, of, of oh. our book. No problem, sabi yeah. ko, Noel. Don't worry. And uh, nabanggit niyo si Noel, Father. Mm-hmm. Uh, yesterday, uh, at the deadliest deadline, na, uh-huh. nasubmit ko po yung dalawang articles na dapat isusulat go for the souvenir program of the Metro Manila ah, Film Fest oh. on its 45th anniversary kasi ano sa execom din po okay. ako. Mm-hmm. Pinahihirapan mo naman Noel si ano, Tita Boots? <coughs> Actually, ako, ako <laughs> nag-volunteer. Okay. okay. So let's talk about it. So, um, ah, pero yun pala, uh, 50 years almost of uh, your movie career, no? what would you uh, say uh, were, were the highlights of your movie career. Ano yung like uh, ano yung paborito niyong pelikula na ginawa ninyo? Mm, siguro ho father bago yung pelikula ah. kung paano ako finally mm-hmm. napasok sa industriya kasi I had offers naman even as a younger person. But uh, Lisa Moreno and uh, her partner Eddie Rodriguez. Mm-hmm. Um talagang they were very adamant hindi nila ako pinakawalan hanggang umuo ako. Mm. Um, and uh, it was a nice movie naman. 
and uh, Eddie Eddie Rodriguez was was very well respected uh -huh. as an actor producer. So finally, sabi ko sige first and last movie. <laughs> para lang para lang sige na para mm. matuloy na lang ito. Uh -huh. Oh, ayan, di awa ng Dios, mahigit 100 movies na ho nagawa ko. Oh. <laughs> wow. But um I'm glad that yeah. ano that I went into it after all. I have movies running in my uh, veins because yes. of my dad. Yeah. And um, my late husband, Pete, was also a media person. He mm. also had his acting career mm. for theater and uh, for TV and movies, mm. although he was essentially a production person. Mm. Um, and uh, so I'm, I'm glad I went into it. You know, Father, um, matutuwa kayo dito. Yung mga madre sa assumption. Uh, kasi alam nila ang tatay ko, artista. Mm -hmm. So, hindi, medyo ilag sila sa Tagalog movies kasi uh, nga colorful, etc. So, one, when I went to UP, sabi nga nila, wow, UP, uh, okay, maybe it's good for you to go to UP kasi you're very scrupulous, sabi sa akin. <laughs> Loosen up a bit and go to UP and experience a co-educational life. So that was one. Nung pumasok po ako sa movies, mm -hmm. eh napakalaking shocker dun sa mga madre, madre. sa assumption. Because oh. I was like, you know, gold medalist for conduct, mm -hmm. president of the sodality, oh. blah, blah, blah. Student oh. public action, all okay. of this, ganyan, ganyan. So medyo nagulat sila that I went. But in the course of my movie career, every time I would go to a, a reunion in Assumption, the nuns there would approach me and... Uh, very humbling, Father, but very hard for me. They would always tell me, we are glad you joined the movies. Nah. We are glad. Kasi, um, bandera mo yung, ah. okay, why mong bandera ng assumption? Yes. At, uh, um, you know, go into facets mm. of the film industry that others may probably mm. not tread on. Did you entertain uh, at any time uh, entering the <laughs> religious life? Oh, yes, Father. Oh. When I was in high school, uh -huh. from nag-umpisa ho yan when Father Lorenzo Maria Guerrero mm -hmm. was a retreat master in grade 6 in Assumption. Bago ho nun, Father, medyo pilya ho ako eh. Uh -huh. uh, uh, you know, I would, I would spurt ink on the back of my classmates' uh, blouse when we were in line. Yung mga ganun. Parang hindi ko ma-imagine <laughs> na pilya kayo. Mga ganun. Mga ganun, no? Mga kapilyan uh, lang man. Or in church. Uh, uh, pag uh, sa sodality kasi, we would have our office mm. uh, every Thursday afternoon. I was the number one giggler. Mm. So, um, while we were doing the vespers and all of that, I was there giggling and hahawa lahat yung mga classmates ko. So, yung mga madre, you know, we pa inaano kayo, ay, nagtatawa nun kayo. Sino na naman yan, si Maria Elisa ako, Cristobal. Ako yung kapural. <laughs> yung mga ganon. But anyway, parang the turning point towards my my being uptight and scrupulous was in sixth grade after a retreat with the Jesuit Father Ayun, Lorenzo Maria Guerrero. Ayun, Jesuit na naman. Opo, mm -hmm. kaya ang mga Jesuit, straightened you out. Hindi ko humayulay sa buhay ko. <laughs> so anyway, after that, yun na parang uh, tapos, you know, I, I came from a dysfunctional family. My parents separated mm -hmm. and all of this. Mm -hmm. So parang ako na ho yung tumayo na mm -hmm. um, parang in charge sa pamilya. Mm -hmm. And um, so anyway, at all that while, I was, um, I thought I had a calling. I thought I had a vocation. So nung, nung second year po ako, kinausap po po yung yung aming mistress of class, si Mother Angela Ansaldo. Ano yan? Tiyo yan ng asawa ni Jo Marie Chan. Another mm, wow. Jesuit. Oh, tiya pala. Oh. So I told her about what I thought would be a calling. And um, sabi niya, you can nurture it, pray about it, but... Uh, you know, you allow yourself some distraction yeah. because you're young. Yeah. And yeah. Um, young girls go through this stage. Yeah, that's a very uh, good advice. Uh -huh. yeah. So, siya yung unang-unang natuwa nung upon graduation from high school, 
pinapasok ako ng tatay ko sa UP, sabi mm. ni Mother Angela, mabuti nga para mm. dyan malalaman mo yes. when you have all of this, Correct. when you're outside the convent walls, kung meron ka talagang wow. vocation. Eh, wala pala ho. <laughs> <laughs> Sigurado kayo, ha? <laughs> okay, going back to the films that you have made 100, ano, I think it would be unfair, but uh, para po sa inyo, ano yung Uh, paborito niyong ginawang pelikula and, and why? Oh, siguro ho yung landmark movie ko mm-hmm. with Dante Rivero and Lisa Lorena. Ito po yung Wanted Perfect Mother ah, in yes. 1970. I think it was my third movie. Mm-hmm. And um, Wanted Perfect Mother was a take-off from Sound of Music. I mm-hmm. did the part of the governess. And uh, it was a musical. Mm-hmm. We did some singing, mm-hmm. guitar playing, blah, blah, wow. blah. Mga orphans noon, mm-hmm. sila yung Gina Alahar, mm, oh. si um, uh, Ariosto Reyes, mm. Jesuit, Jesuit trained din po yan. Si Snooki started her career there oh, as a three-year-old. Yeah. And this was the first movie directed by Lino Broca. Oh. First movie niya. I was one of those who convinced him to go into the movies. Classmate ko po yan sa, atin, sa UP. UP yeah. And we were together sa UP Dramatic Club. So in one of our bus rides going, I said, Lino, pati ka mong movie, sayang. Mm-hmm. You know, you have the theater, ganyan, ganyan. And uh, wal- wala pa siyang masyadong confidence. Mm-hmm. So after school, I uh, told the Leia Productions people about him. Mm-hmm. And they got him. Um, yun yung mga contemporaries ni Lino. Medyo kinansyawan siya, mm. tinuksutukso siya. Uh, at sinabi, ang tagal mo nag-iisip pumasok sa pelikula from your background, this and that. Ang unang gagawin mo, comics, material. Mars Ravelo po yun eh. Uh-huh. Yung Wanted Perfect Mother. Comics. But why don't you look for a, parang a loftier material? Ganyan, ganyan. Ang ganda ho ng sagot ni Lino. And I always, mm. I would always tell my students about this. And people in the industry. Na, um, lalo na ho itong mga indie, indie filmmakers. When you, as a filmmaker, you you do not make a film to satisfy your... Um, I mean, it should never be self-serving. Mm. It should never be just a personal or social statement. Mm-hmm. You have to remember, uh, foremost, is your audience that you have to address with, and with varying issues yeah, at hand. Yeah. No? So, sabi ni Lino nun, hayaan niyo ako mag-umpisa sa comics para agad-agad mag-create ko yung aking audience. Mag- ma- magkaroon ako ng audience. Kasi nga naman, kahit ba maganda ang pelikula mo, may sinasabi ka, uh, artistically excellent and all of that, kung walang manunood, kanino yeah. ka mag-connect? Correct, correct, yeah. So sabi niya, let me go through this commercial film. Sabi niya, total maganda naman ang gagawin kong treatment mm-hmm. as a director. And pag meron na akong audience, then mm-hmm. I will infuse you know, my insights, my my loftier um, aspirations mm-hmm. as a director. Tama naman siya, Father, no? Yeah, yeah. You Wanted Perfect Mother was a Metro Manila Film Fest, ano, uh, a Manila Film Fest entry. It was, it won Best Picture and several wow. awards. It was number two or number three at the box office. Wow. So, napaghalo. Mm-hmm. Pwede pala ho yun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, diba? yeah. And after that, so, Lino was sought after. Ginawa na niya yung kanyang mga tubog sa ginto. Yeah. Santiago, kami mm-hmm. rin yun. Uh, so, many other movies which later on earned for him the National Artist for Film Award. So, Wanted Perfect Mother. Uh, okay. Uh, I uh, will just take a short break. Ano? Sabi ni Noel, ule, uh, active si Noel. Sabi niya, my favorite quote of Tita Boots, the factory is closed, <laughs> but the playground is open. <laughs> okay, uh, sandali lamang po. Ano? We'll just take a very short break. Tatanungin natin, w- what did she mean by that? Okay, wait lang. in a few catiponeros so please stay tuned 
are now on YouTube. Watch all of our live episodes plus exclusive content in our channel at Radio Katipunan FM. Don't forget to click subscribe and hit the bell to get the latest updates. Lead X. X is for the extracurricular life of the Ateneo College students. X is for the X Factor that transforms them into leaders, into men and women for others. X is for Lead X. Lead X. Down from the hill. To open our eyes and ears that we may see the face of Christ and hear his voice in our midst. For 28 years, Jesuit Communications has been promoting the Catholic faith and serving the nation through both traditional and new media. Hear us tackle national issues in light of Christian values on Usapang Kapatid, Pasakalye, and Radio Veritas. Watch our uplifting reflections on Kapit Pandasa and The Word Exposed, as well as our acclaimed TV specials. Listen to the inspiring and soothing music of Jesuit Music Ministries' original artists as you read our spiritually enriching books. To learn more about JustCom's mission of evangelization and education, follow us on YouTube, Facebook, and our website, JustCom.ph. To give a face to the faceless and a voice to the voiceless, that we may recognize Christ in them and hear his story in theirs. Calling on all young male professionals. Do you wish to live an extraordinary life? Are you tired of the routine and mundane and long for a dynamic, adventurous, and even dangerous life? Do you wish to make your life count? and hope to make an impact long after you're gone? Do you wish to live a life of service to society, to country, and to dear Mother Earth? Then you are the one we are looking for. Consider the Society of Jesus. Join the church's gallant army and turn your world upside down. Call the Jesuits Vocations Promotions Team. 426-6101, local 3406. Once again, 426 6101 Local 3406 Follow at Radio Katipunan in our social media accounts on Facebook, Instagram, and on Twitter. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ear. Do you long for a good spiritual read? Or for literature that not only feeds the mind, but nourishes the soul as well? Do you want to be inspired, feel positive, and hopeful about life? Then read The Wind Hover, the official magazine of the Jesuits in the Philippines. Written by Jesuits and their lay partners, The Wind Hover features real stories about the Jesuits and their various ministries. Be inspired. Be blessed. Subscribe to The Wind Hover. For inquiries, call the Philippine Jesuit Aid Association at telephone numbers 426-6001, locals 4890 or 4892. Once again, Philippine Jesuit Aid Association, telephone numbers 426-6001, locals 4890 or 4892. The Jesuit Hour. Get to know the Jesuits. Discover their spirituality, their history, their ministries. The Jesuit Hour. Anything Jesuit, everything Jesuit. The Jesuit Hour. And we're back here at the Jesuit Hour, and we are, of course, with the great legendary Miss Maria Elisa Cristobal Anson Rodrigo, or... Uh, <laughs> okay, um, so ano pong ibig sabihin ni, ano, ni uh, Noel Ferrer? That quote, um, the, off, the, the factory is closed? Na, <laughs> nag-umpisa yun, Father. Um, <clears throat> when I, I got married the second mm-hmm. time, at the tender age of 69, mm-hmm. and my husband was 75 years old. My second husband is uh, Francisco Rodrigo Jr., mm-hmm. the son of... Senator Soc Rodrigo. Mm. 
So when we got married, of course, ang biruan. Oh, papano? Kailan ng ang kailan ng binyaga? <laughs> Sabi ko nga sa edad namin, eh pag nagkaroon kami siguro ng anak, paglabas niya may pangil at may sungay na 'yan. In fact, even even Cardinal Tagle who yeah. officiated no. at our wedding, mm-hmm. ang unang-unang ang pasakali niyang una eh at nagtawa na nagad ang mga tao. Sa totoo lang po, ngayon lamang ako nagkasal ng mas matanda sa akin. <laughs> And then, he, he would always tease us after that about yung aming imaginary child hmm. na ang pangalan ay John John. Kasi, uh, sabi nga namin, sige, pag nag, di, nag, sumasakay na lang kami doon sa mga biro-biro, wow. pag nagkaroon kami ng anak, di, ang pangalan uh, medyo John the Baptist. Bakit? Kasi si John the Baptist, ang parents niya parehong matanda, di ba? Ah. Di ba? Si Sakaraya, ah, so matanda. Si Elizabeth. si Elizabeth Maog, matanda. Mm. So, it was only by some miracle na pinanganak nila mm. si John the Baptist. Pero sabi ko, huwag <laughs> naman John, masyadong tsaka John the Baptist pa, masyadong conserved, uh, conservative na. I-modernize naman natin, gawin natin John John. Nah. So, kinuwento namin kay Cardinal yon hmm. So, si Cardinal ho, kahit saan kami magkita niya, kahit in public yan, o, kumusta na si John John? <laughs> anyway, yung, yung nga pong, yung nga pong hmm. retort ko na yon pag may nagbibiru sa amin, oh, ano, hindi pa kayo nagkakaanak. Mm-hmm. Uh, madalas nga sinasabi ko, ay, sorry, po, the factory is closed, but the playground is open. <laughs> so, yun, yun, yun. Yun po yun. Noel, ha? Ano tayo? PG. <laughs> okay. Uh, pero marami na po kayong apo, di ba? So, Ay, opo. you're busy with your apo. Your apostolate. Yeah. Opo, ang apostolate. Yeah. Nine grandchildren. Wow. Um, apat po dun sa panganay ko hmm. na nasa Amerika. Um, tatlo kay Chiki hmm. na nandito sa Antipolo, dalawa ho dun sa bunso ko. Hmm. And uh, my second boy, uh, Joey, single. Uh, okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, so pag-usapan po natin yung mga advocacies ni, ano, ni Ma'am uh, Boots. Uh, at marami po siya. Una po, of course, yung uh, Mowell Fund. Mm-hmm. Yes, Mowell Fund. Ano? Kasi, grabe, no? when I was reading about Mowell Fund, that it's really for the workers in the movie industry, mm-hmm. for their hospitalization. Parang, uh, this is a uh, support fund for yes. for those who are in need ano, in the movie industry. Opo. So, wow. So, paano pong, sino pong nag-isip nito? Ang founder po ng Mowell Fund ay si former President Joseph, Joseph Estrada. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, this was in 1974 mm-hmm. when he was really big as an actor, producer, yeah, yeah. a president of the Motion Picture Producers Association. Ang, ang kwento po niyan, uh, urban legend po. Urban legend. Eddie, at the time, ang pinakamalalaking artista po ay siya, mm-hmm. si FPJ, si FPJ of Fernando course. po Jr. and mm-hmm. Dolphy. Eh, ito pong mga, itong tatlong ito, napaka pusong mamon po yung mga yan eh. Mm, oh, Masyadong yeah, uh, mabait. pagbigay, mm. mabait. And so, hindi matapos-tapos yung healing sa kanila ng kung sino-sino in mm. and out of the industry. Uh, tulong sa kasal, sa binyag, mm. sa libing, yung KBL na mm. natin natawag. Mm. So, minsan daw nag, nag, uh, um, nag-untahan yung tatlo at sinabi daw ni President Joseph. But hindi, nung sila nagkaalaman talaga na pare-pareho pala sila ng ginagawang mm-hmm. tulong. So sabi ni President Joseph, pati hindi natin i-institutionalize yeah, itong tulong na ito. Mm-hmm. No, let us consult lawyers and administrators and come up with the um, Uh, a, a foundation mm. that will address the problems of all of these people Correct. who come to us. Yeah. So, doon ho pinanganak yung Mobile, Mobile Fund, Fund, which is short for Movie Workers Welfare, Welfare Foundation. Foundation. Um, sa tulong nitong mga ito, at mga sila Maricho Vera Perez Maceda, mm. Susan Roses, um, they they commission mm. lawyers and yeah. uh, foundation workers to 
perform the, yeah. the how do you how do you church. raise funds yung mga actors pa merong uh, monthly dues wala po father <laughs> eh, kaya nga kaya nga gusto ko ng pag-aralan ng ginagawa mo ng jazz ko very <laughs> effective eh, for you know for Uh, eliciting pledges yeah, and all of that. Yeah. Kasi meron po kaming mga um, <clears throat> mga institutional na donors uh, and individual donors pero hindi po yung yung annual, hindi mm-hmm. po yung permanent. Mm-hmm. So when we write them to ask for help, that's when they come uh, to help if they come. So ang regular subsidy lang po na meron kami ay nanggagaling sa Metro Manila Film Festival. Yun, uh, and uh, again, uh, <coughs> this was because of a proclamation um, and uh, an executive order in the in the 70s, mm-hmm. 1974, that uh, President Joseph Estrada uh, worked on mm-hmm. para po ma-create yung Metro Manila Film Festival. Okay, yeah. An extension of the Manila Film Festival at the time. Mm-hmm. So, eto nga po, kaya po parehong 45 years old na po ang Mowell Fund uh-huh. at saka Metro Manila Film yes. Festival. Um, And uh, the Metro Manila Film Festival had its uh, artistic mandate na to elevate mm-hmm. the quality of films yes. uh, to uh, commercially provide uh, theaters, yeah. booking theater, mm-hmm. bookings in theaters uh, during the most sought-after play date in the mm-hmm. industry. That's the Christmas play date, yes. December 25 to January 7. Mm-hmm. Na because of that executive order, yung pong mga foreign um, films, uh, films mm. no? gave way to Filipino films. Yeah, it's, it's really a great movie. Ano, idea. Ang yeah. ganda po. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And then meron din naman pong social responsibility na yung pong i-donate ng mga local government units, mm-hmm. kasi Metro Manila nga po, no? so like the 17 mayors would donate uh, 10% of their amusement taxes mm-hmm. to the industry for that period, yes. during that period. So involved in po lahat ang Galen. gobyerno. And then, on the social responsibility bit, um, may mandate po mm-hmm. ang MMFF na tulungan ang film-related agencies uh, for their subsistence and um, yeah, their, their own separate mandates uh, by donating Uh, net of 10% mm. of the amusement taxes to these film-related agencies. So, At kasama doon yung Mowell Fund. Opo, Mowell yeah. Fund, <coughs> Film Academy of the Philippines, mm-hmm. Optical Media Board, Anti-Piracy Council, and Film Development Council Galing. of the Philippines. Oh. So, um, kaya ho parang magkaakibat ang mm. Metro Manila Film Fest yes. at ang Mowell Fund. Yeah. Eh. I wanted to ask you also about that. Sino po naman yung nagtulak doon sa creation of the Metro Manila Film Fest? Ito nga pong nakakatawang istorya, Father. Uh-huh. Kenko story po ito, uh-huh. pero totoo. At si, si President Joseph mismo nagkukwento. Um, he was mayor of San Juan at the time. Okay. And so, naisip nila to support the industry further, uh, why not Uh, extending the Manila Film Fest to Metro Manila mm-hmm. for all the reasons that I already yes, cited. Yes, May yes. mandate naman ito. Mm-hmm. Pero kailangan, since involved yung local government units, syempre, uh, it would have to be, aside from being institutionalized, it would have to have the sanction of the government mm-hmm. uh, through the Metro Manila Commission, mm-hmm. which at the time was headed by First Lady Melda Marcos. Melda Marcos yes. uh, so, ang naisip ni um, President Erap, who was mayor of San Juan at mm-hmm. the time, and president of the Philippine Producers Association, eh di isip niya, papapirmahan niya yon. <laughs> Kailangan merong proclamation, uh, executive order, uh, blah, yeah. blah, blah. But how to get to the First Lady? Mm-hmm. Bising busy si Madam Marcos. Madam, yes. So, isang araw, He put off he you know he put off his swagger jacket costume <laughs> uh, habang nagsha shooting di ba kaya asyong salonga mga asyong salonga type na suot niya uh, rubber shoes mm-hmm. etc parang robin hood characters mm-hmm. na pino portray niya and all the accoutrements of that don his barong tagalog mm-hmm. 
in, in the fineries, nagpunta sa Cultural Center of the Philippines, mm -hmm. hinin, walang appointment, hinintay si Mrs. Marcos na dumating para ballet recital. <laughs> <laughs> so, kahit matagal daw siya, siya nagkakwento nito mismo, ha, si President Estrada. Kahit matagal daw siyang naghintay, okay lang. Mm -hmm. Pagdating ni Mrs. Marcos, sabi sa kanya, Oh, Joseph, hindi ko akalain, mahilig ka pala sa ballet. <laughs> Kaya sa, sanay siya, no, yung role niya parati. Yeah, fag, action, diba? yeah, yeah. So, right then and there, kahit na uncomfortable siya doon sa suot niya, in-explain na niya agad, <coughs> Binigyan niya ng briefing si Mrs. Marcos, explained, etc. At pinapirma. Yun. Yun. Yun nag-umpisa yung proclamation and then sinundan ng executive order. So, there. There began the history of the MMF. 45 years. Yan ang tawag niya. Ambush interview. Yun. Kaya ang tawag nga daw kay Mayor Estrada noon, ang tawag sa kanya ng mga kapwa mayors niya kasi may dala-dala siyang folder noon ready for signature. Ang tawag sa kanya, the folder mayor. The folder mayor. Wow. Talagang action man pala talaga si ERA. At saka, isipin mo, no? Yung foresight niya, yung vision niya for Mobile Fund and for the MMF. So, at that time, uh, ang Mobile Fund ang ginawang managing arm. Mm. Kasi ang board ng Mobile Fund composed of people in the industry, yeah, di ba? Yeah. <coughs> MF Film School pati, etc. Mm. At tapos, yung unang-unang beneficiary ay Mobile Fund. Mm. Para nga naman. Galing, galing nga. Eh. And yet, at the same time, nakatulong mm. sa mga producers na kumita mm. ng malaki during the MMF period na involved yung mga local mm. government units, di ba? Tsaka yung, ano, yung patronizing our own. Yes. Di ba? Kasi alam naman natin na ano, eh, the, uh, without... Uh, At that time, yeah, uh, medyo iba ang tingin sa, yes. sa Pinoy movies. Uh, uh, eh. Because of that, uh, yes. parang at, nagkaroon ng niching. Uh, At tsaka yun nga, we have to thank the, the bookers and the distributors and the theater owners. Mm -hmm. Binigay nila yung pinakamahalagang mm -hmm. play date ng taon. Takot lang nila kay Madam. <laughs> Takot lang nila kay Madam Imelda. <laughs> okay, so um, uh, if you are going to uh, talk about the film industry now, ano, ano po yung nakikita niyong parang mga, let's say, mga lights and shadows? I, I would say that uh, in, in many respects, uh, we, we are still at a crossroads. Hindi na natapos na po itong crossroads, crossroads na ito, uh -huh. eh, di ba? I guess it's, it's a sign of uh, dynamism. Mm. What, do, what do you mean by that, yung crossroads? Why are we... Uh, crossroads in particular for the mainstream mm -hmm. film industry and the independent. Okay, film industry. yeah, indie films. Yeah. Uh, over the last, what, maybe 10 years yes, now? Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, Napakalaki nung dichotomy mm -hmm, or chasm mm -hmm. between uh, mm -hmm. the mainstream, the big production yes. outfits, at yung indie filmmakers. Mm -hmm. So parang ang tingin noon, uh, 10 years ago, and maybe even now, uh, second rate yung indie film na yan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Kasi kulang ang equipment, uh, mababa small budget, budget yeah. small budget, mga artista hindi mm -hmm. kilala generally. Mm -hmm. Oo. Ang mga, ang mga director, ang mga staff members ay hindi rin mm -hmm. mga kilala, mga uh, newbies yeah, yeah. in the industry. Kung ihambing mo dito sa mga malalaking mm -hmm. productions ng Star Cinema, Viva, Riga, yeah. etc. <coughs> so, um, but if if you note, if if you remember, and may, many people will probably remember, that um, 10 years ago or more, si Mother Lily of Regal, mm -hmm. sinimulan niya yung concept eh, ng indie film, uh, indie filmmaking by doing her, what she called her pito-pito movies. Uh -huh. Oo, yung pito-pito movies niya. Yung ba yun? Yes, uh, tinawag na pito-pito kasi pitong araw lang ang shooting mm -hmm. mo. Ang budget mo, 2 million lang mm -hmm. or 2.5 million mm -hmm. lang. Um, basta, bibigyan ka ng support na, pero pagkasyahin mo yan, 
pero kailangan magaling ang pelikula mo. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tall order, no? From Mother ah, Lily. So meron siyang But ganun. that was the precursor of, of the, indie films. Oh, oh, yeah. oh. Although, of course, yung independent short films ina-attribute sa Mowell Fund Film Institute mm-hmm. na kung saan nagsimula okay. sila Nick, Nick Leo Campo, sila Larry Manda, mm-hmm. Neil Daza, yeah. all of these people. But anyway, going back to the pito-pito, doon nag-umpisa yan. Mm-hmm. Kaya dyan pumasok yung mga Jeffrey Jaturian, mm-hmm. si Love Diaz, yes. itong mga um, indi- indi- independent no, filmmakers well, no, din ngayon, no. na, na kinuha ni Mother Lily. And ngayon, mm-hmm. ngayon yan, nag, ano, na sila, they traversed kumbaga, the, the route from indie film to mainstream. Yes. Kaya meron po tayong um, term ngayon na ano eh, main D which is a combination of mm-hmm. mainstream and indie. And you notice that even among movie stars and directors na mga, mm-hmm. mga may pangalan, lumalabas sila ngayon sa yeah, indie yeah. films. Mm-hmm. No? And, and vice versa, like, yung mga indie actors and actresses lumalabas na rin ngayon sa mainstream. Halimbawa, siya nun, no? a very successful indie film uh, in recent memory is General Luna. Yes. Diba? And then, yung director kinuha na to direct Darna. Yes. Diba? So, Gerald, no. So, mayroong ano po, ano, nakakatawid na, ba? Diba? At yung, yung mga maliliit, quote-unquote, na productions noon, like yung TBA, yung mm, producer noon. Yeah, na, yeah. Considered indie producer yan, mm. eh, pero ngayon, major na. Yeah, diba? major na. Quantum Films ni Attorney yeah. Georgie alone, so major na yan. Pero ba, why is that a concern po? That, sabi mo nga, there's a chasm that uh, ngayon naman at least na, be bridge na. But why is that a concern? Kasi ako, parang feeling ko, yung indie films, Are they supposed to join the mainstream or are they, di ba? What? Um, meron pong mga indie filmmakers who prefer to stay yes, indie in that na, respect. Yeah, yeah. Na, na they can issue social statements. Yes, yes. Uh, they can be as nationalistic, as patriotic, yeah. as unconventional, yeah. and daring, and, and courageous yeah. as they want to be without fearing uh, bombing at the box yes, office. Yes, yes. Eh, syempre, kung mainstream production ka, hindi naman pwedeng malugi yung pelikula uh, mo para makapagpatuloy. Malaki ang budget mo. Eh. Oo, yeah, yeah. para mapagpatuloy mo. Yeah. At saka, ang laki ng ang laki ng staffing ng mainstream yes, yes. Uh, producers. Yes, eh you have to sustain itong malaking mm. staff mo, the production crew, etc. Um, so, kailangan, kailangan ma-ensure na kung hindi man kumita, mabalik man lamang yung kanilang uh, ano. Yeah. Oo, eh kasi the way taxes and other obligations of producers go, mm. for every one peso na kinikita ng isang producer, 30 pesos lang ang napupunta sa kanya, eh, nababalik sa kanya. Yeah, mahal talaga. Kasi merong yeah, part goes to the um, the theaters and part goes to the government yeah. for the oh. taxes. Yeah. Mm. Ako, actually, sa akin, ang mas challenge yata ngayon sa film industry, whether it's indie or mainstream, is itong ano po, yung digital mm-hmm. uh, na Diba, meron na yung uh, Netflix, yes, iFlix, I want, yeah, you know, diba, I want, oh. parang hindi ba challenge yun na parang, uh, number one, parang uh, hindi na sa theaters mm-hmm. ang labas ng pelikula, kundi sa, sa ano na, sa mga oh, oh, oh. iPhones, smartphones. Yeah, it's, it's a big challenge, yeah. tama kayo, Father. Uh, dahil... Um, <clears throat> because of the, the, the technology, technology and yes. the advancements in technology, yun nga yung wala na ngayon yung celluloid, wala na ngayon yung pati nga yung videotaping, uh, wala na yun. You mm-hmm. go live, on stream, online, etc. No? Uh, it's a boon and a bane, I guess. Yeah, yeah, no? yeah. Um, But we are surviving this challenge. I'm this, sorry. We are surviving this challenge, this I, digital I challenge. I think the, the film industry will survive uh-huh. any challenge that comes its way mm-hmm. because it has had to face so many challenges over the last 100 years. Yes. We are observing the centennial of the Filipino film industry. And um, through this, through the... Um, through the century. Ang dami ng... Ang Challenges dami ng, oh, that we survived. The wars that have yeah. come, di ba? Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, um, the economic um, problems mm-hmm. that they've had to uh, um, they've had to address, ano? Mm-hmm. Marami, marami yung mga 
the, the social mm. factors, the marketing forces. Napakarami. Oh, pero nandiyan pa rin. May sinasabi pong golden age of Philippine mm-hmm. ano, film, di ba? Uh, why um, do they say that? And, uh, okay, historically, ho, ang, ang first golden age, kasi dalawa na, you know? Ang first golden ah, age was in the 50s. Okay. When um, the, the four major studios, Sampagita, LDN, Premiere, and Lebron churned out movies that were not only um, um, excellent, no, that were not only artistically above par, if not excellent, and won uh, awards even abroad. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they also did well at the box office. Wow. Um, ito pong 1950s dyan po naghari ang mga katulad ni Manuel Conde. Yes, whose movie, Khan. Yes, uh, whose movie, Gengis Khan, Gengis Khan, was the first Filipino film to be recognized in the Venice Film Festival, yeah. di ba? Yung yeah. Berlin, yung Venice Film Festival. Hanggang and hindi then, ko maisip kung paano niya nagawa yung pelikulang yun. Oh, and diba? if you talk to June Urbano, the uh, son, very modest ang means. Yeah. Very, very modest. Wow. They just had great people comprising their production mm. staff among them, Botong Francisco, or rather, was it Botong Francisco or Nanding Ocampo? Uh, Fernan- Fernando Ocampo, who was there? Uh, I'm not sure now if it was Botong Francisco or Fernando Ocampo, uh, who was the the costume designer. No, 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 no. Yeah. Oh, what about the second golden age? When would that The be? second golden age was the 70s. Yeah, na, sina Lino kung Broca. saan dum- lumabas na yung mga Lino Broca, yeah. Ishmael Bernal, uh-huh. um, Eddie Romero, of course, stayed on from mm-hmm. first golden years yeah, to the wow. second golden years. Um, sila Mike De Leon, mm, yes. uh, Celso Ad Castillo, mm. Loris Guillen. Um, it, ito na yung mga, ito na yung, ganun din, no? They produced movies which not only won internationally, uh, but also were highly recognized and um, given tribute to here, and which also did well at so, the box office. So do you office. think there will be a third golden age? Ah, uh, marami po nagsasabi na itong, there were those who predicted na dapat na nitong 90s. Eh. Mm-hmm. Pero um, I would say that now, the, the present time would be a, a good time, no? Kasi mm-hmm. ang dami ngayong, at ah, saka yun nga, the, the challenges are greater now, no? Mm-hmm. Yeah. For our filmmakers yeah. makers to hurdle. No? So if they succeed, then that would make for an even more deserving golden age mm-hmm. than the 50s and the 70s. So. Okay, batiin lang natin si Evelyn Agkawili Pakleba watching from Bahrain. Oh, Bahrain pa. Hello, good. hello. Anong, uh, oras po ba dyan sa inyo? So good morning na or good afternoon. Seven hours or six hours Sila. or five hours yata. Yes. Oh, oh, okay, so oh. thank uh, you. Oh. Miss uh, Boots, ano, uh, ano na lang po tayo. We have uh, barely a minute. Uh, siguro po, if you're going to address our students here at the Ateneo, ano, uh, what would you tell them ano, in, in terms of the film industry, going into films? Is it a uh, um, worthwhile career? Mm. Profession. Yeah, uh, alam niyo, Father, ang nakikita ko po parati ngayon sa, sa um, online, yung isa po sa mga uh, part of the jargon now mm. of the high-tech people is uh, influencer. Influencer, diba? yes, yeah. yes. If you young people would like to be an influencer, mm-hmm. not for yourself, uh, not for your own glory, mm-hmm. but for a higher glory, mm-hmm. the industries, for art, and for God's glory, mm-hmm. as Jesuits have taught us, no? uh-huh. uh, for the greater glory of God. Uh, join the industry, the film industry. Um, in whatever phase, on mm. camera, behind the camera, the artistic, the technological, because um, only then can you be able to reach out to a vast audience and uh, spread your message en masse. 
um, and and be an influencer in the positive sense of the word. Amen. Mm-hmm. Yan. Ang ganda. Thank you po. Thank you so much, Miss Boots. Thank and you po. again, we are so honored uh, for uh, your appearing here. Thank you so much. And, and we will continue to pray for you. Thank you. And thank you for having me in the board of JESCOM of for course. 15 years now. Oh. 17 years now. Yata, it's father. an honor for us. Thank you. My honor too. Oh. Okay, yan po, mga katipuneros. Uh, again, uh, nagpapasalamat tayo sa isang legend you know, for gracing our show. Pagdasal po natin si Miss Boots. Uh, marami po po siya mga proyekto. Uh, she has a book coming up next year. Ano? Uh, and uh, we are very happy that Jesscom will be part of that book. Yes, thank yes. you. Ang title po, as inspired by another Jess with mm-hmm. Father John Powell, uh, Fully Alive at 75. From, from the book, Fully Human, Fully Alive. Fully alive. Okay, hanggang uh, bukas po dito sa The Jesuit Hour. Ito po si Father Nona Alfonso. Please take care of yourself. Bye-bye. Jesuit Hour. Get to know the Jesuits. Discover their spirituality, their history, their ministries. The Jesuit Hour. Anything Jesuit, everything Jesuit. The Jesuit Hour.